Hello and welcome to this revision guide for Unit 4 GCSE Biology and today we're looking at non-communicable diseases. So a non-communicable disease, first of all, is a disease that cannot be transmitted from person to person. So it's not caused by a pathogen that can be spread, which we'll talk about in the next module. Um, but it is rather something that you develop due to your lifestyle or due to um, things you're exposed to in your life. And um, the, the likelihood of developing the disease can be increased by risk factors and exposure to risk factors. Um, and risk factors are things that can increase your chances of developing disease and they're often linked with lifestyle, such as diet, for example. So here you've got uh, 10 key risk factors for heart disease. And you can see that heart disease, which could be anything from a stroke to a heart attack to high blood pressure, could be caused by certain things that we, we cannot um, do anything about. So it can be caused by obviously getting old, you can't do anything about that. Um, it, can, it can be caused by conditions caused during pregnancy, you can't do anything about that. Genetics, so some people just have a higher risk of these things due to inheritance. Um, but then there are things that can be um, altered in our lifestyle, so being obese or overweight, um, high cholesterol, which some people can't avoid, but again, it often links to diet, diet itself, a lack of exercise, diabetes, which again, some people can um, avoid because it can be caused by their diet, some people can't, um, high blood pressure and smoking. Obviously, smoking is um, obviously avoidable as well. So why these are important is because there is a correlation between people that smoke and people having heart disease. So this is an apparent relationship between two factors. And you might see a graph where it shows as one increases, so does the other increase. But in order for us to prove that this correlation is important, we need to be able to find, such as this one, for example, so there is a link between the health risk and your BMI, your body uh, index, which is your weight effectively. And the higher your BMI, the more likely you are to have a disease. So the BMI scale effectively says that if you're above 25, you are overweight, and if you're above 30, you are obese. And you can see here, you're 1.5 more likely to have, I think these are heart attacks, 2.0, 4.5, sorry, to have heart disease, um, if you are those areas. Um, but we need to understand well, why, because that's just the correlation. So we need to find something called a causal mechanism, which is an explanation of how one factor influences another. Now, one thing that we're going to look at in quite a bit of detail is cancer, um, and that is a apart from one is a non-communicable uh, disease, um, and the type that is uh, communicable is cervical cancer, which is why people um, have jabs at a young age now to avoid that. Uh, but cells normally divide several times when they are programmed to die. Um, so what happens in a regular cell in your body is something called apoptosis, and the cell is divide say 50 times and then it will die and this stops there being too many cells but cancer is when a mutation causes cells to undergo uncontrolled cellular division by mitosis um, and become a tumor so the nuclear division that becomes unstable is mitosis and that causes a huge amount of um, cells to develop so you see here the two pictures first one normally you have a normal cell division where a cell keeps develop, developing, developing, it might get damaged and then it gets um, apoptosis or cell, cell effectively programmed to die. Um, and that's a normal part of your body, it doesn't hurt, it's, it's exactly what your body planned to do. But with cancer cells, the cell doesn't um, die and it escapes any program to stop it from dying and it becomes a tumour. So what is the difference in tumour and the cancer? Well, a tumour is a mass of abnormally, abnormally dividing cells. Um, it is, if it is benign, it is not cancerous and it has not spread. So we just say it's a tumour. So what this means is it's in one part of your body and it hasn't spread and therefore it's, not, it's less likely to cause any damage. If it's malignant, however, this is when we say it's cancerous and it is spread around the body to different places and it might therefore have, um, might be starting to damage organs that it's spread to. 
and there are lots of risk factors associated with cancer you just need to know sort of the most common sort of ones so things like smoking um, drinking poor diet uh, getting older and also radiation such as uv radiation which can cause skin cancer are risk factors of cancers so continuing um, this idea there are over 200 types of cancer and that means there are many risk factors um, there are four um, so if you just have a look at the risk factors first of all so some of these that you would be expected to know um, any of them would be fine for an exam but the ones they normally focus on are tobacco or smoking radiation or uv radiation lack of activity which obviously links to body fatness as well uh, alcohol consumption is a big one these days um, this is the uh, cause of cervical cancer which is the only one that is transmittable um, but you see would need to know for this module um, processed meats stuff like bacon they, they think is a link to it any ionizing radiation um, and that is effectively the ones that you would be expected to know now there are four early symptoms that you need to know for cancers again with over 200 types of cancer there are more symptoms but these are the most called most common one now effectively for you um sorry i wrote four but there's actually five um effectively for you the word lumps is quite a useful uh, way of memorizing this because it means that you've got something you can think of in the exam so the L in lumps stands for lumps itself. So we'll explain lumps such as um, breast lumps in breast cancer um, or uh, unexplained tiredness. So if you're really tired all the time um, and for no reason, that one is a potential one. Uh, changes in moles, um, often skin cancer links to moles, uh, unexplained pain and significant weight change um, could explain could be signs of cancer obviously they could also be signs of many other diseases but they're signs to go to the doctors now cancer can be treated through two main methods radiotherapy which is using x-rays to kill the cancer cells and chemotherapy which uses powerful drugs to kill the cancer cells and people often lose marks in the exams because they say chemotherapy uses chemicals to kill cancer cells but chemotherapy uses powerful drugs to kill cancer cells. Now, one of the key uh, risk factors of cancer is smoking. And you are expected to know the main effects of the main chemicals in smoking. So smoking has a correlation, i.e. a relationship with many health issues and it is definitely there are causal mechanisms to show that it does cause health issues. Um, you must make, know the main impacts, so basically the main causal mechanisms whilst uh, smoking, of smoking um, on yourself but also if someone's pregnant as well. So if we have a look at these pictures, there are three main chemicals, obviously there's thousands of chemicals in cigarettes, but there are three main chemicals you need to know about in cigarettes so carbon monoxide um, is a toxic gas as you'll know from chemistry it reduces the um, ability of your body to carry oxygen in the blood so the moment you start smoking you are carrying less oxygen in the blood tar um, causes cancers so tar is the carcinogen that causes cancer and it also uh, damages the lungs in other ways um, there are things called particulates which damage the surface of the lungs so there's a little unburnt bits of cigarettes and nicotine and nicotine actually causes two things nicotine is the addictive substance that makes you um, want to smoke more but it is also increases your blood pressure so nicotine isn't just addictive it also causes problems in terms of your uh, blood pressure as well which could lead to heart disease so those are the four, well, four main chemicals, but the three main ones you need to know are nicotine, carbon monoxide and tar. Now, they can obviously lead to stuff like heart disease, it can lead to less oxygen in your body, so your heart has to work harder, it can lead to cancers, it can lead to increased lung infections. But how does it increase the increased lung infections? Well, one of the reasons that it does is that um, cigarette smoke 
um, damages the cilia inside your lungs. So what you should be aware of is that cilia are important. So in your airways, the cilia, um, or the mucus produced, mucus captures the bacteria, and then the cilia waft the bacteria um, so that the bacteria is moved up the airways and it can be swallowed and goes down to your stomach. But by having the cilia paralyzed because the smoke damages the, the ciliated epithelial cells that have them, the cilia are unable to do their job, they're unable to waft and the mucus builds up. And this is what causes a smoker's cough because it irritates your, your linings of your lungs until as a smoker, you have to smoke, uh, you have to cough up um, that, that, that um, build up of, back of mucus. Now being pregnant is even worse time to smoke because it damages the baby's health potentially as well. So think about these conditions. The main uh, impact probably on a um, baby is going to be this one, um, the carbon monoxide, because that is going to be able to transfer directly and easily from the blood of the mother to the blood of the baby. And effectively, that's going to cause the baby to have less oxygen. Um, and if the baby's got uh, less oxygen, it's going to have impacts because obviously oxygen is needed for respiration. And therefore, the baby will struggle to get as much energy as it needs. So why, what are the effects that you need to know? We need to know the baby could have a low birth weight. And obviously, the lower the birth weight, the more potential issues there are. It could be a premature uh, birth or so preterm labour, so go into labour early, um, and that can cause um, massive health issues, and that can obviously lead to birth defects such as the ones listed there, or it could be that you um, have a loss of the baby, so it could be a miscarriage early on or stillborn because the baby can't cope during labour. So. Pregnancy has high risk on the baby's development and health early on um, in, the, in the, the lifetime of the baby. Now, another drug um, that we need to be aware of is alcohol, which is more of a common accepted drug as well. Uh, but it might be socially acceptable, but it causes lots of problems. So alcohol is a drug which can lead to liver cirrhosis and cancer. And that's the key message you need to know. Um, but you also need to know maybe some long-term and short-term effects of drinking alcohol. So alcohol is a depressant drug, which means it slows down your nervous system. So it slows down your responses. Hence, it is illegal to drink and drive because um, it will slow down your nervous system and stops the messages crossing the synapses. And it means your reactions are slower. So short-term effects of um, drinking alcohol, uh, that yes, it can make people relax, feel good, but it can also make you dizzy, it can make you drunk, it can make you sick, it can get, make some people get angry, it can make some people lose their balance, lose their inhibitions. Long term effects are it can damage your liver and brain, and then obviously all the other problems you can see there, but also their cancer now is definitely being linked more to uh, drinking alcohol. Um, and again, drinking alcohol when pregnant is a big problem because the, the, it is a toxin, it's a poison, and the baby's liver is not um, ready to deal with that at the point of, of being developing. Um, so the key things that you need to be aware of is that it could lead to birth defects, such as limb, limb abnormalities. Um, it could lead to low birth weight, which again we said could reduce the chances of um, survival effectively it could lead to uh, preterm delivery so the baby comes early it could lead to some uh, different sort of um, mental um, abnormalities which could cause issues with the baby's behavior um, it could lead to stillbirths the baby's dead when it's born because it can't cope with um, with the pressure or the, the stress of delivery and it could lead to some developmental delays in the baby so some really um, key ones that you need to be aware of the ones that the specification suggests that you know are birth defects um, low birth weight so I'm having trouble my pen here uh, premature delivery and still births. Those are the ones that the, the exam board suggests that you know.
And the last area which causes a lot of uh, non-communicable diseases is poor diet and a lack of exercise. So you should be aware that a balanced diet, and often people get this wrong, it's not when you have enough of each food group or it's not when you have the best food groups, it's when you have the correct amount of each food group. And that is slightly different for different people depending on your activity levels, etc. But here you can see the colours that represent it. So about 40% of your daily intake should be fruit and veg about 25 percent should be um fiber rich carbohydrates about 25 percent protein and only 10 percent fat and a very small amount should be stuff like processed sugars now a poor diet one of the key is one of the key risk factors for type 2 diabetes it's also a risk factor for heart disease and cancers um but type 2 diabetes is when your pancreas no longer produces um sorry your yeah your pancreas no longer produces i'll get it right a minute your pancreas does produce insulin but your liver doesn't respond to it anymore um and type 2 diabetes can be caused by the following risk factors so it could be family history it could be being older it could be your ethnicity it could be also though physical inactivity so there's a risk factor that is non-communicable that you can definitely change yourself so on on your lifestyle it could be overweight so again that's something that you're um you could change um with your lifestyle it could be high blood pressure which some people can change some people can't it could be high cholesterol and it could be smoking so all these are risk factors that cause type 2 diabetes um and type 2 diabetes can obviously lead to serious problems such as blindness and death or loss of limbs and need to have amputations now type 2 diabetes can be treated um by having a low carbohydrate balanced diet or a low sugar diet okay it can be treated by having um taking medication um which will hopefully help your liver respond to the um the insulin that's being released or it can be treated by take and it can be treated by regular exercise and really it's treated by all three of these together and that's the best way to treat type 2 diabetes <laughs>